What's up my ninjas? This is uh, Strident and uh, I am back with my thoughts on the Blade anime. <laughs> um, okay, so a lot of people, if you saw the previous video, uh, a couple people told me that the you know they watched it and it was great and I should check it out and you know all these 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 good things that I should expect and I'm assuming that the majority of them are people who they like anime as it as it is now for me as someone who has be become kind of jaded with anime um, you know I started out liking it and then it started getting generic and I kind of just I'm like yeah it takes a lot to impress me. Um, I was watching this thinking that, you know, it would be halfway decent. So, Blade, pretty much, for those of you who you might know and you forgot or you don't know or, you know, whatever, maybe you're new to the whole thing. Blade is a vampire hunter. He's pretty much like, <laughs> he's like the boogeyman of vampire hunters to, uh, you know, vampires in Marvel's universe. Um, pretty much, he has all their strengths and none of the weaknesses except for the thirst, which means he wants to drink blood sometimes, but he won't bring himself to do it. In the comics, it's gone from him taking a serum and, you know, different things, meditation, will everything for him to stop himself from drinking blood in the movies it's just will and uh you know a concoction that whistler came up with to help him repress the urge to want to drink blood um blade pretty much is he's got superhuman strength speed healing uh all his senses are you know supernaturally you know enhanced or whatever you want it they're not enhanced but they're all uh, uh, supernatural in level you know he can see way farther than the average person uh, hear everything you know he's he's extremely acute in his awareness um, he's stupid fast um, he's extremely strong I mean he still can take damage but he's extremely strong it's like meta human levels you know um, and it varies depending on the writer. Anyway, I'm pointing all these things out because I watched episode one, and uh, my <laughs> the verdict is this for episode one. And I know it's just the first episode, so there's there's room for things to you know go in other ways. But the verdict is uh, it's better than what I expected, but I'm still not impressed. Um, the things that are better than what I expected are somebody in Japan knows how to draw black people besides uh, Bob, the dude who draws uh, Afro Samurai. And this time they didn't make Blade look, you know, completely disgusting and nasty like Afro Samurai who looks like he just smells like, like hot ass and feet. Um, also, they didn't skimp on making Blade formidable which, I mean, if you're going to make him look like the movies, which means you're referencing the movies, there's no way you could make the series without having him be a formidable fighter. I mean, he pulls off this, like, insane uh, ninja magic type samurai move or something. It's like one of those finishers in Samurai Showdown where uh, he creates an image of himself, a werewolf tries to cut him and slashes his head off, and then the image disappears and then the werewolf is split in half and blade is behind him and it was pretty cool the way they did it too i'll give him that you know that was hot um but there are things you know kind of like with blade 3 uh blade is not the issue because blade is extremely simple he's batman with swords and vampire hunting gear essentially um it's the other people number one Makoto, the female vampire hunter in this series, she she carries brass knuckles with spikes on them. They're silver brass knuckles. That's it. 
extremely low tech. She's a tiny girl. I don't care what martial arts she, she learns. They didn't put the effort into making her that sweet physically that you believe that those those brass knuckles in her hands could do some damage. I mean, like, you know, I'm going to go back to Justice League Unlimited. When Batman was using the nth metal, actually even in Brave and the Bold, when Batman uses his nth metal uh, brass knuckles, not only are the brass knuckles doing damage, but the moves that he chooses to use are doing damage to the people and they look like they would do serious damage to whoever he hits even if he didn't have the knuckles on the brass knuckles on or whatever the nth metal knuckles on so you know they have her punching and kicking vampires and they just blow up they go into flames and i'm like okay you see this was a problem for me in blade the movie that does not exist the third <laughs> blade movie um you had ryan reynolds and you had uh the, the amazingly fine Jessica Biel just beating the shit out of vampires and they were doing it with the and getting the same results that Blade gets. Now, if she was hustling them with moves and things that actually, you know, would hurt, then I'd be like, okay, cool. I mean, there were a couple scenes where she did like, you know, she punched something in the back of the head and it was like, you know, lit up in flames. But like, it's, it's as if they generalized so much. And I know people are going to give it all this, all these passes because it's an anime. Oh, they didn't have time. Oh, they didn't have the money. Oh, they didn't have this. They didn't have that. But there's so many other things that they, they dabbled in the vampire lore. And they dabbled in the, you know, just the realm of vampires, you know. And they did better in their dabbling than this being a, a you know, fully focused on vampire lore and stuff actually blades version of vampire lore so it it kind of uh that part is disappointing that you know like her dad comes in spraying with a machine gun and they just die <laughs> flat out <laughs> they don't even try to dodge nothing dead okay cool i'll i'll take it he's he's got skills okay fine suspension of belief then this little girl comes in this small girl i'll say she's a she's a woman She's punching and kicking vampires, and the first kick she does looks like it would have hurt. But the rest of them, it just doesn't feel like anything, you know? So she's weak, like we expected. Like I told you from looking at the design, this is how well I know Japanese animators, because they stereotype everything, and they don't push things. It's like, a, a, it's like four houses or four uh, studios that actually like to take ideas and push them and Madhouse apparently is not one of them. Or whoever this division of Madhouse is, is not one of them. Uh, the next thing I have an issue with is Deacon Frost's like two seemingly right-hand people. Magically, these poorly designed bad guys pop up and get the drop on Blade. And I don't understand like why is there a need for whoever, for Madhouse to come up with new villains when Blade has a universe, you know? Agent O said this in my, in, in our, uh, the previous review. I made a comment about, uh, I made a comment about, you know, just the designs. I was, I think I was talking about, um, the Van Helsing guy. And he mentioned that, you know, Blade has his own stuff. Why, why do you have to make up new people to put in Blade's universe when you could have just put those characters from Blade's universe in the anime, animated it, and here you go. So we get two poorly designed characters, and I'll, I don't know. Their importance will be seen in the future, obviously. Like I said, I'm judging only the first episode. Then it brings me to my last complaint, and that's Deacon Frost. So his design is generic. Extremely generic, right? So his role is extremely generic. He meets up with Blade at the end of the first episode. There's a ton of spoiler warnings because I'm telling you my thoughts on this. Um, he meets up with Blade at the end of the first episode. And they fight. Blade immediately gets angry. And Deacon Frost just hustles him with like super, super natural, even more so than vampire, regular vampire strength. And I was like, when did this happen? You know, Deacon Frost... Just because he's not a full, he's not a, a pure blood. Well, okay, as of the movie, 
he was not a pure blood vampire. And just because you're pure blood doesn't automatically make your 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 strength level way higher than the Daywalker who has your strengths and none of your weaknesses. So like this guy kicks Blade once and Blade is reeling on the ground and I'm like, wait, where where the fuck did this happen? You know, when and I get it, this could be this is a whole different somewhat different type of situation, except for the fact that Blade feels like they pulled him right out of the movies. And the the rest of the universe kind of feels like they pulled it out of the movies with some embellishments but then deacon frost doesn't fit makoto doesn't fit her dad kind of feels generic you know it's just it 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 seems like not enough thought was put into some of the things that i'm hoping i would want in my vampire hunting movies and stuff i would want these characters to have more thought put into them i mean when you watch you know, lame animes like, in my opinion, lame animes like Helsing. There's characters in there that are doing unbelievable shit, and they put a level of thought into it that's just ridiculous, you know? Like, uh, Ceres. She has that ridiculous gun, and you sit there and you can see that they thought up how the gun works, and how she would handle such a big gun with her being not that big of a person. Um, Cowboy Bebop, my favorite anime, probably the best anime of all time, in my opinion. Uh, there's so many characters in there that like their gear is well thought up and are thought out and the weapons work with the costume and the armor works and it takes place in a future that we may, we may never see but they put that amount of detail into it so that you can visualize and see how these things are meant to work um, Vision of Escaflone both the series and the movie both, not uh, the regular movie, but the A Girl in Gaia. You see designs, and you see how things are meant to work. There was actual research and actual, you know, design work that was put into this. You know, it's like you could tell these were industrial design majors or fanatics, and they actually went to work with making shit that works, and and it 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 fits. Blade's weapons seem to work, and they fit, and they look logical, but uh his uh, uh the the people around him the other vampire hunters they're like people in generic teeny bopper j-pop idol clothing that well the girl is who don't uh they don't have the kind of thought put into their weapons and stuff so i'm just i hope that it gets more in depth as time goes on um i know some people are going to be like god you're so harsh on them but you know i design stuff i do comics myself i do character design so, like, when I'm designing characters, I have to come up with a reason for why things do what they do and I have to show you why it does what it does. Um, if you look through War of the Gods, you'll see a lot of designs and weapons and pieces of armor and things that fit together because there's a, fu a function, a form and a function, and the form must follow the function. So, you know, I know that's a design standpoint that I'm complaining about, but it's also a character standpoint because like they said in training day and it's probably one of the only things in training day that made sense psychologically the weapon that you have defines you and in an anime that's full of stereotypes the weapons and the way the characters interact and use their weapons defines them as a character in combat bruce lee would say it's emotional content so anyway i'm not super impressed but it is better than what I was expecting. So I'm going to go and I'm going to watch the other, you know, I think they're up to like episode five or something now. So I'm going to go on there and I'm going to continue watching them. Um, thanks for, uh, you know, you guys for giving me links and letting me know where some stuff is. I appreciate that. I'm going to check it out and then I'm going to get back on here and I'm going to get on my soapbox and let you know what I think. So uh, thanks for paying attention and uh, peace outside, my ninjas.